Camille A. Brown, uh, you choreographed the uh, NBC production of Jesus Christ Superstar, which was broadcast live on Easter. Uh, how did that opportunity first come about? Wow, uh, it came out of nowhere. I got a phone call from David LeBeau. Um, well, actually my agent called me and said uh, if I was interested in choreographing for Jesus Christ Superstar. And I said, oh my goodness, I was so like taken, taken aback. And then uh, I connected with the director and it just came from there. I thought I was going to have to audition and just kind of talk about my work, but he said he had been watching me for some time now. So it was just about choosing me for the gig. So just the rest is history. And, and how familiar uh, were you with uh, the musical before taking on this production? Uh, were you a big fan? Did, had, you, had you seen it before? Yeah, I'd seen it before. My mom loves musicals, so that was one of her favorite musicals. And I've seen uh, the movie as well, but I did have some distance from it. So I just had to kind of get back into it and, and familiarize myself with it again. Did you draw uh, inspiration from you know a previous stage version or, or, or film versions to, to choreograph this one? Or, or did you want to go in from a fresh perspective? Yeah, I definitely wanted to go in from a fresh perspective, but I think it's always hard when you do a revival uh, because many people have done it before you. So I was really interested. I looked up a couple of things online just to see what other choreographers did, um, but I really wanted to get my own point of view. And I actually took one of my older pieces that I choreographed in 2006 called uh, New Second Line, and it was about Hurricane Katrina and Second Lining, which is also a social dance uh, from New Orleans, and it's rooted in the African-American experience. And when David was talking to me about Jesus Christ and uh, the universality of, of religion and prayer, uh, it automatically connected me to that piece. So I took kind of fragments from that and just kind of deconstructed it and, and generated mo new movement from that. And uh, this performance uh, of Jesus Christ Superstar, you know, one of the unique things about it uh, is that you're not just choreographing for the live audience there at the venue, you're also choreographing for a live TV audience, uh, you know, as it's being filmed by cameras. Uh, yeah. How did that affect how you approached it? Did you have sort of two minds about like what the audience is seeing and what the, the TV audience is seeing? Definitely. I mean, I've never done te television before, so I was kind of learning as I was going. Uh, so it was really interesting to be with the director, uh, the TV director, Alex, and the producers, and David, the director, to just talk about the shape of it. Because we had been in a rehearsal studio for a couple of weeks, and then it was about shifting over to the stage. Uh, so I definitely had to go from uh, thinking about what this show meant as a whole in the rehearsal studio to then moving it to a space where, okay, what is the television audience seeing as well? So um, I was definitely learning very quickly how to do that. And, and was there any part of that that surprised you the most about what was different about the, you know, what you needed to do and, and how you needed to consider the movement uh, uh, for cameras as opposed to just the, the live uh, audience in the venue? Yeah, I, I I felt like I couldn't be as abstract as I would for a live audience. Um, I think to be exceptionally clear in the movement and the direction, um, I love it when people are doing this idea of social dance where there's a structure, but there's also creative identity happening. So people look like individuals, but there was a time and a place for that. And it was about so that, so that was the challenge. How do you bring about this look of community, but also bring the individuals out on a TV screen without overwhelming that audience? And uh, the show uh, was was staged ultimately at the uh, Marcy Avenue Armory in Williamsburg, Brooklyn, uh, which is you know this very large, uh, uh, impressive space. Uh, I actually happen to be in the audience for it, uh, <laughs> so. Uh, uh, Congratulations on it from where I was sitting. Uh, how did that physical space uh, of influence how you approached the choreography? I know you said you you uh, did it in a rehearsal space before moving it over. Yeah, which was great because we already had the setup. So I was already familiar with the distance and how wide we can go and take things. Uh, but in the theater, we actually had an opportunity to sit back and really look at it again in the whole picture. So um, that was, 
great to to do to have those two different things and you're constantly shifting you constantly have to be on the edge of your feet and that's definitely how i was throughout the experience and was that uh, the largest or one of the largest physical spaces you, you've choreographed for or 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 have are you accustomed to, to that kind of space no this was my first the time choreographing for a huge a uh, huge uh, amount of people um the first one I did that was over 20 was for the Juilliard School in 2012, and that was 24 people. And this was over 35, so uh, it was definitely new. But I love this idea of bodies moving together. I've always um, had a fascination with building. I used to play with Legos, and I still play with Legos, but this idea of these moving parts together in these, in these big spaces, so it was great. Yeah. Is it more challenging to uh, to, to choreograph for uh, many more uh, dancers, or or does everything kind of just scale up fairly uh, easily? Uh, I think it's about as the numbers grow. It's about making sure that the community and the energy within that group sustains itself, and it's strong, and it has and it has a unifying base. And I really think that contributes to how the company performs, how they receive information. Um, and we actually had these in stages. So the first week, I only we were only working with nine people, and then we bumped it to twenty five, and then. Uh, a week and a half before we did it, we added the dancer. So I did have an opportunity to start very small and then slowly build the picture. So. And the, the show uh, was directed by, as you mentioned, uh, David LaFoe and also uh, Alex Rudzinski. Uh, and Rudzinski has already done uh, you know, a few of these live musicals for, for TV in recent years. What was it like uh, collaborating with them on you know, what their vision for it was and, and what you were able to bring to the choreography? Yeah, this was one of the best experiences that I've ever had. Um, David and Alex are exceptionally giving and gracious and the entire creative team that you would think since I'm the first, I'm, I was probably the only one that had never done TV on the creative team. Um, so I was kind of like the new kid on the block, but no one ever made me feel that way. I always felt included and respected and it was just a really, wonderful, fast, but loving and caring um, experience that I will always treasure, always. And uh, you know, your your choreography is sort of one of the first impressions you get during the show. That opening, uh, you know, musical and dance number before uh, Jesus is introduced to the show. How did you want to set the tone with that uh, with that opening number? Well, I knew we had the live audience. So it was really about like revving everyone up. So I used this gesture and I would tell uh, the dancers and, and the actors that this is about getting the audience and evoking the spirit of Jesus to come. So it's just kind of like, how do we create this rock energetic concert that just gives the energy out? And of course, uh, you know, one of the other big numbers uh, is the the showstopper, the superstar uh, at the climax of the show. And and for a show that that has so many tragic elements, of course, uh, in the story of of, of Christ and his uh, crucifixion, uh, you know, to bring out that joy that comes from that uh, from that particular number, what was that like to work on? Oh, I loved it. I mean, it was the 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 most. I had to do a lot of work. I had to do a lot of work on all of them, but that was the one where everyone was in it and, and, and kind of like trying to shape the picture. So it was just really wonderful because I had these different roles that were kind of living within the space. So you have Judas, you have the Soul Sisters, and then you have the chorus that is supporting them, and then you have Jesus. So there were a lot of wonderful elements um, but it was really just about how do you keep this, how do you push the story forward? How does the movement help the net, how to tell the, the story? And uh, yeah, the, the principal actors in, in the show, John Legend, uh, Brandon Victor Dixon, Sarah Bareilles, uh, those aren't necessarily the most dance intensive roles. So how, how much did you work with them as a part of the pieces you were, uh, you were, you were creating for the show, uh, for them, around them? Yeah, the person that I worked the most with was Brandon because he was in Superstar. Uh, but Sarah and John, uh, I didn't really work with them. 
a lot. I worked with John on the the 39 lashes, just in terms of like his body shifting. Um, but I I didn't really move with them. But they were all for it though. They were ready to go. Uh, was there uh, yeah, any numbers from the show that you were particularly proud of when you actually saw them executed uh, during during the live uh, production? I would have to say Superstar because there was a big change made a couple of days before we had to do it. Um, so it it really had to, the piece really had to shift and the uh, ensemble had to pick up and keep up with all of the changes that I had to make based around the change. And for them to approach that with such love and openness, um, I'm, I'm really, they're the only reason why that that was able to do that. So that's the one that I'm really um, excited and, and proud of. Yeah, and uh, yeah, were were there any uh, other numbers that you would say you you felt were especially challenging uh, to approach, or you weren't necessarily sure what you know your your approach would be or how it would turn out? Uh, I have to say. I think it, I think it was superstar because that's the one that's the most movement based, uh, and that's the one that, like you said, is the showstopper and everybody's waiting for it. Um, so, and that was the one of the few times that I was able to have the entire cast on stage. So I, I would say that one. And you know what's interesting about Superstar and uh, a number of the other performances is how much uh, you know the costumes interact with the movement, and especially in, in that Superstar uh, uh, with with those very bold, uh, uh, shining uh, costumes on all the actors, including Brandon right. Victor Dixon. Uh, how did how did that contribute, or, or uh, how much did you know that was going to contribute when uh, when you were working on on the the dance uh, numbers? Yeah, well, Paul and I uh, were working together as we were coming, creating this work. So I knew all of the sketches and the, what the costumes look like. Um, and I especially love the ladies from uh, King Herod's uh, number. I love that because they kind of have those poofy um, feathers in the back. So I, I did some stuff that would accentuate their hips. Um, so it's nice to have a collaboration like that. Now, in addition to uh, Jesus Christ Superstar, uh, you're also the choreographer of the Broadway revival of Once on This Island, which is, which is currently running. Uh, how did that uh, opportunity to arise, arise and, and was there a lot of back and forth between these two projects or, or were they separate enough that they didn't really conflict with each other ever? Yeah, no, they were separate. Uh, Michael Arden contacted me, the director for Once on This Island, and said he was inter interested in speaking with me about the show, uh, which was very exciting. It's the first show that I've ever done in the round, I'm used to just doing things in a proscenium setting. And I met with the writers after that, and just a couple, after a couple of conversations with them, uh, it, it was it was a deal and uh, they chose me for that. And thankfully, uh, sorry, thankfully Once on this Island opened December 3rd, and so there wasn't a con a conflict with Jesus Christ. And what's it like uh, uh, choreographing for theater in the round as opposed to proscenium? How like wh how much differently or how how differently do you have to approach you know, the choreography? Yeah, I mean, there's no back, so you're performing in a circular in a circular way. So everything has to people have to see from all different angles. And when you're doing a proscenium, you only have to, the audience just sees from one direction, but now you have the space around you and your energy has to go to those places that you're hitting as well. And I actually was working on a piece for my company called Inc. And while I was doing it, so I, as a little rehearsal, I started choreographing some of those sections in, in a circular way to get used to how these things constantly move um, because I knew we didn't we didn't have enough time like not enough time but we didn't have a lot of time to put this together during the rehearsal so I kind of started in my own way and then we moved and the good thing about it is that Michael uh, set it up at in the round when we were in rehearsal so at no time were we in a setting we were constantly focusing on 
um, what this world looked in a certain way. And, uh, you know, like Jesus Christ Superstar, Once on this Island is, is based on a previous musical that, that had been uh, staged before. Uh, did you take inspiration from uh, the previous Once on this Island? Had you seen it? Were you able to see any any uh, 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 choreography from that? Yeah, uh, I didn't see the show when it came out, uh, and but I knew everyone had done it because every time I brought it up, people said, oh, I was in that, oh, I directed it. I was like, wow, there are a lot of people that are connected to this show. Um, so I did look at some things online just to see what other choreographers were doing. But that's as far as that went. I really think it's important for me to put my own voice on on a show and a creative in a creative language. And what does that language look like for Camille? That is very different from other people's. Um, and also, I believe that culture tells you the way to go. So this was influenced by uh, Afro Haitian, Afro Cuban culture. So I was able to pull in those elements as well. Uh, to create the movement for the show. Uh, well, I want to uh, congratulate you on uh, both Jesus Christ Superstar and Once on This Island, uh, which uh, you know could get you an Emmy nomination and a Tony nomination this year. So uh, good luck to you on, on both of those. Uh, thank and thank you so much for talking to me today. Yes, likewise. Thank you very much.